fall, mm. won't kick down. I need to finish getting the backside up on there. So I'm gonna get my other laser man bucket. See right here. Oh, it's hard to see with a camera. But that seal, you know, as I'm pushing that seal up onto that last bit of shaft there. So I'm just holding this bearing in here with my finger so it don't fall and don't drop. I'm doing, I'm gonna line up this key so with it locked in, you can turn this easily. When it's not locked, it won't turn. Mm -hmm. You can't turn it. So unlock it. You can turn this, it doesn't matter where it's at, but it has to line up with this keyhole right here. This flan or this key. I'm gonna go ahead and line that up. Yeah, I can see that right there. There we go. I got this up here, I can take this away. Yeah. I really didn't have to have the bucket and that under there, but you know, all it takes is it falling once and then you got a screwed up seal or whatever. It's just it's safer to have something under just in case. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this by hand. With my little sensor, ABS sensor, actually because I had pushed it out, it's actually just touching. So, But if I had to adjust it, I would just get in there with my little pry bar and I would push it back out. But it just happens to be uh, just touching it, so anyway, let's torque it down. Now, torquing this thing down, because you have an aluminum hub and because we just threw the bearing in there and didn't you know press it in or hold it tight when it sealed and when we shrink fit it we should uh, we should torque the uh, nut to about 250 foot pounds and then try to work it a little bit because that'll help it seat the bearing if it's not 100% and then we'll back it off and then we'll set it correctly um, the book says to set it to 50 foot pounds of torque with no set of tires on it I think and I've talked to quite a few mechanics that do this um, I'm not the expert that's for sure but I can tell you what works but I've done it before and I've had really good success and helped a lot of people with with the tires on it, uh, on the axle, you can I always torque them to about 80 foot-pounds. And with the tires off, like this right here, I always torque it to about 50 or 60. And when I torque it to 50 foot-pounds, you know, it's usually not in the position to, for the tabs to lock in to the nut, you know, the locking tabs. So I'll just keep turning it until it finds the next spot and locks in, which isn't very much. So that's what I'm going to do here. Let me go get my torque wrench. Okay. All right, got my torque wrench set on about I don't know, 230, 240, 250, 250. And uh, I'm going to put this on here. And I'm going to tighten it up. So it clicks. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this thing around a couple of times. Settle. Do it again. Ah, I got more on it, see? Mm -hmm. So you keep working it until it settles in. I got more 
at that time. And you do that three or four times. Make sure that it's seated really well. That's it. it ain't going nowhere. All right. Now that I have that, I need to torque it properly. That's over torque. That's over torqued. You can't run down the road like that because it'll overheat. It's too much friction, too much. They call it preload. Preload on the bearing. You want about eight, seven, 50 foot pounds. 80 if you got the tires on it because the tires will throw the torque off a little bit. But now we need to bag it off and set it properly now that we've seated everything. So, take this off of here. Alright, and we will, I got this one set on 50, so let's set this on 50, let it loosen a tiny bit, and then torque it. And then we'll turn it, check it again. Now we have a problem of ensuring our nut is locked in the lock tabs. Flashlight and uh, check see if it's locked. Mm. You get a good shot of that. You can see that it's not locked in. The little tab is, the little key is not in the hole. Mm. Mm. See that? Yep. The top one's the same way. And it's got to go. Just a little bit more, maybe a quarter of a hole. There it is. Now it's locked. You see how much farther down it is now? Mm-hmm. Let's check the top one. And the top one's locked too. Yep. Yep. So now the tabs are locked. I need to get that plug out because we need to fill this thing back with oil once we get the axle back in. Mm -hmm. So let's get our gasket, we'll put on there, and then we'll get our axle slid back in. That way this thing doesn't get dirt in it. And then we'll fill it with oil, throw our tires back on, pour it all down, and make sure we're uh, our little sensors. Yeah, it's just, can you hear that on the camera? You can just barely hear it. Just starting to touch, you hear it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's perfect. Okay. I'm gonna take this plug out. It looks like it's a quarter inch. Yeah, quarter inch. On mine it is anyway. Then we'll get this, this plug out of here. <laughs> it wasn't even that tight yet. Yeah, we need to clean this thing up. Uh, fortunately, I have a Pro Star. Pro Stars have these metal axle seals. Uh, and if it's in good shape, you can reuse it. They're actually made to be reusable. Let's see if this one is. We're going to clean it up and see what we get. And we're going to put the axle back in next. So let me clean this thing up for a little bit. Really? All right, I got that cleaned up. I got this cleaned up. Well, this was already cleaned up because we cleaned it before. <laughs> and put the seal back on. My reusable metal gasket seal. And grab the axle. Guitar, huh? <laughs> it's clean. Probably when that thing went bad. Yeah. A little bit off of this thing. We don't want those inside there. Nope. Mm. Let 
You have to lift up on the end of that thing to get it in there. Mm -hmm. Now, I found out from a friend of mine that if you go to pull these axles out, if you have a differential lock on your truck that locks the front axle to the back axle, um, that's okay. Uh, you don't need to activate or anything like that. But if you have the double differential lock, which is the one that not only locks the front axle to the back axle, you know, when you're in, you know, you're slipping in the snow and ice or whatever. Mm -hmm. If you got the one that locks the two tires, you know, to each other this way, they call it, I think they call it a double, double differential lock or something. Anyway, you have that type. If you don't lock it before you pull this out, what happens is the spline in there for that lock will drop and you won't get this axle back in. Hmm. So I just th thought I'd let people know that because some trucks do have that. Uh, and you have to keep the, the axle locked with air applied on it, you know, it's air activated, the whole time this thing is out. Now, if you pull this out and you can't, you know, you forgot to lock it or something like that, what you can do is you can ensure it's unlocked it'll drop in there. You'll, you'll see like a, you know, you, you can see the spline where this goes, the hole, and then there'll be like another piece behind it and you'll see that it dropped. You can just take a, like a broom handle and slide it in there carefully and, you know, look down inside there with a flashlight and then just lift it and get it in place mm -hmm. and then hit, have somebody lock it, you know, by applying air to it up there and have the truck. And then it'll stay up there and then you can put the axle in. So. That's, uh, I think, something I should probably have mentioned. I didn't know that until recently, so I can take mine apart. I didn't even know that. Mine don't have that kind of lock, so mine, you just put together. Now, to get the end of that thing to raise up, to go back in the spline, I'm going to use this and cheat a little bit. I could probably push down with my hand and all that and slot, and, and then I pinch my fingers. On. I can't stand that. Yeah. I'm just going to cheat a little bit and put this in here, and I'm going to push down, and that's going to lift up. And it's going to go right in. And then, of course, you have uh, a second place that it likes to catch in there. And so it doesn't want to go in either. So you have to kind of work it. And I pushed in again, and I worked it, and it mm -hmm. jumped in. Now, if you do this with your hands, that's great, but I can't. Last time I did it, I pinched the crap out of my fingers. Uh-uh, I'll do it this way. <laughs> so now I'm going to raise it up. Finish working it in, just like that. Hmm. All right. Yeah. So that's that back together. Now we'll put the we'll start the nuts and we'll put that back on. And then once we get that locked back down, uh, we can fill that up with oil. So let's get the nuts started and uh, come back. Okay.